to our Monday night Bible study. <clears throat> Tonight we'll be in Daniel chapter 12. That's Daniel chapter 12. I got a couple of quick announcements to make before we get started. Um, the lectureship that's coming up in a couple of weeks has been put in the uh, announcements at the congregation. There's been flyers printed up and also a sheet with the days of the classes and who's teaching and what the subjects is teaching on. I want to pass that on. Also, I just want to let you all know that tonight, for tonight, we're going to do something a little different tonight than what we normally do. Since uh, Daniel chapter 12 is a short chapter, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it over to Brother Stevenson and he's going to go through the chapter and he's going to teach from it. It's still going to be the same thing with you know, questions and answers and so on and so forth. I just won't be calling on anybody to read tonight. And also to let you know that um, once we finish this, we'll be moving to Hosea this Thursday. Hosea, the book of Hosea this Thursday. So with that being said, um, is there anyone that has any prayer requests before we get started? We have anyone with any prayer requests? All right. If not, then I'm going to ask Brother Coffee, my brother, if you don't mind, if you'll open us up with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this day and this opportunity to gather together with the saints uh, to look at another portion of your word. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to make it this far in this day that we're able, uh, that no hurt, harm, or danger came towards us. And it's our hope that all of our family members are or doing well. We just continue to pray, Father, for um, this study, and thank you for uh, Brother Stevenson uh, to take the time to uh, study the scriptures and teach us what thus saith the Lord. We thank you for Brother Green and his uh, and his organizational skills to make sure things are done in decency and in order. We pray, Father, for everyone that's here and the family rep and the families that are represented, and also the churches in which we represent, which is the one true church, the Lord's church. So be with us, Father as we now um, take a look into your word forgive us a lot of our sins clear our, clear our hearts and minds to prepare what you have received what you have prepared for us we thank you in jesus name amen 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 thank you for that uh brother coffee and i'm going to ask anyone that's not speaking or asking any questions or anything could you please mute your mic so we don't get any background noise with that being said uh brother stevenson Thank you, uh, Brother Green and Saints. Uh, again, this is the final chapter of Daniel, chapter 12. And I just want us to keep in mind that the theme of Daniel, uh, the whole book has been God rules in the kingdom of men and that God cares for his people. I think, you know, that's been the theme, uh, the thrust throughout all the, uh, the, the chapters that we studied. And really, that's what Daniel is dealing with, that ultimately God is in control. You remember back in Daniel 2, just real quickly, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and Daniel was able to interpret the dream uh, about the statue. Uh, Babylon represented the head of gold. The Mede and Persia is represented by the breast and the arms, which was silver. The Grecian Empire uh, represented the belly and the thighs of brass. And then you have the Roman Empire, the last empire, the legs and feet, which represented by iron mingled with clay. Remember, it was during the Roman Empire that uh, the Bible said, Daniel 2, 44, 45, that in those days, the God of heaven was going to set up a kingdom that would never be destroyed. And we understand that's making reference to the church of Christ, which is a spiritual kingdom. When we look at Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11 is, is also in connection with Daniel chapter 12. So there's a continuation going on when we get to chapter 12. Uh, of the angel that is talking in chapter 11. Remember, the angel in chapter 11 has been revealing to Daniel the things in the book of truth. When you go back to Daniel 10 and verse 21, I want to read that verse. The angel said, but I will show you that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that hold it with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Okay, and so the angels are going to... Uh, uh, reveal to Daniel some things that are revealed in the scripture. That's very key that we understand that. And the second thing that's key that we understand is that this is all spiritual in nature. 
So the things that emanate here on earth, act, that's, that happens here on earth, it actually emanated in heaven. And so I want to make sure that we understand that, okay? So chapter 11 revealed to us when we studied it uh, last time that there would be uh, wars between the Grecian Empire and, and, uh, and, the, and the Persians. And, uh, and, the, and the Grecians, would, we understand, will be overcome by the Roman Empire, okay? The Roman Empire eventually will take down the Grecian Empire, and during the Roman Empire, the church will be established. So we get to chapter 12, and we look at verse number 1. It says, At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at, a, and at that time, your people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found, he says, written, written in the book. And so when we look at verse 1, the angel reveals to Daniel there's going to be an event like none other that is going to happen. Now, I believe the event that he's talking about here is the destruction of Jerusalem. I believe that's what he's talking about. I believe he's making reference to the destruction of Jerusalem. I think he's making reference to what Daniel calls the abomination desolation, where, where Jerusalem is going to be overcome and be, be persecuted by the Roman government, okay? Matter of fact, hold your tassel, if you would, in Daniel 12, and let's just turn over to the Gospels, Matthew 24, because Jesus, in his earthly ministry, makes reference uh, to to what Daniel sees here in this vision when he came to this earth, okay? Matthew chapter 24, uh, and look with me, just one verse for now, and I want you to keep your task on Matthew 24 because we'll be coming back and forth uh, for a little while to this particular chapter of the Bible. Matthew 24 and verse 15, these are words of Jesus. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Jesus says, stand in the holy place. Whosoever read it, let him understand. And so Jesus uh, knew the scripture. Of course, we understand that. But Jesus makes reference to the scripture uh, about the visions that Daniel saw that the angels gave him. Go back to Daniel, and I want you to go to chapter 9. You'd be so kind. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel 9, and I want to look at verse 26 and 27. If you remember when we studied Daniel chapter 9, Daniel had talked about uh, a period of 70 weeks that was determined upon the people and the holy city. And after the 70 weeks, there was a particular event that was going to transpire. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about the abomination desolation, when the Roman Empire would persecute and, and they would uh, destroy the temple. In Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the Bible says that after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Now, you know, we understand this is talking about Jesus. Jesus was cut off from the land of the living, but we understand it wasn't for himself. It was for us. He says, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city, get this, and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And so the idea here is Rome will eventually destroy the, the temple. They'll destroy Jerusalem. Because once Jerusalem and the temple is destroyed, we understand that means no more worship, uh, no more no more mosaical age. All that's going to be destroyed when 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 Jesus dies on the cross, and then also it's going to be solidified when the Roman Empire when they will destroy uh, the temple of the temple of God. Okay, and so I want to stop right here and ask if there's any questions. I don't want to drag before we get to verse two. I just really dealt with one verse right now. Any questions so far? So does everybody know where we are? as it relates to context. Anybody lost? Okay, so we go back to Daniel 2. Every time you have, any, you, know, you have a question, just raise your hand. Go back to Daniel 12, forgive me, and look in verse 2. And many of them that sleep, he says, in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So look at verse 3, going back to Daniel 12 and verse 3. And they that be wise 
shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And so now, those who obey the God, who hear the gospel and obey it, he says, they're wise. And guess what the wise do? That's you and I. If you obey the gospel, understand something. We're in this kingdom. See, Daniel never saw this kingdom. Daniel never saw this kingdom in his lifetime on this earth. You, you and I are now a part of this kingdom. We can look back and see the fulfillment of this prophecy, and we are in this kingdom. Daniel had to look forward to seeing it. It was something he never saw while he was here. So those of us who hear the gospel and obey it, we're spiritually alive. He said that we're wise. And guess what we're supposed to be doing? If you're wise, you hear the gospel, and then you go out there and you win souls. That's what we're supposed to do. Solomon says it like this in Proverbs 11 and verse number 30. Proverbs 11 and verse number 30. The wise man Solomon says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that win its souls is wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that win its souls is wise. And so Daniel says, and they that be wise shall shine. That's you and I. As the brightness of the firmament. Because we're in that kingdom. Uh, they that turn uh, many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, Back to verse 4, Daniel 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, now he tells Daniel, the angel tells him, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge, he says, shall be increased. Now we have to understand there's there's a couple of events that's going to go on before before uh, the church is established. There's a thing that's going to happen. The Jews are going to be are going to be persecuted. They are. They're going to. The Jews are going to be persecuted uh, by the Roman government. They they will they will definitely be persecuted. And and then once right. even the, even and so you look in verse you look at verse number four. He sold the seal of the words. Daniel is and he's the high he's the high of those words. Okay, he's the high of the words. Look with me now in verse five. Then I Daniel looked and behold there stood other two. The one on the side of the bank of the river, uh, the other on the side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be in of these wonders? And so he wants to know the spiritual hopes of heaven, the angels. They want to know, well, when is all this, when is all these things going to happen? You remember what Peter mentioned back in 2 Peter chapter 1, that the angels desired even to look into, into God, the mystery that God had planned uh, to save mankind. 2 Peter chapter 1 in verse number 12. 2 Peter 1, 12. The Bible says, wherefore, this is Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number, let me see, I don't want 12. Let me find, let me give me one second. I'm going to look for that. First Peter, second Peter, yes, one twelve. That is what I want. Second Peter, chapter one, in verse number twelve, the Bible, the Bible says this. The Bible says, in, give me one second, before I would have to be able to, and maybe y'all can find this before I do. I'm going to look, find this scripture where the Bible says even the angels desire to look into this mystery. It's first Peter 1.12. First Peter 1.12. Thank you, my brother. Okay, yes. Thank you, brother Nick. He says, Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel on you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Okay? To look into. So remember when Jesus was on earth, he said, remember they asked him a question, when is... You know, when are these things going to happen and what are the signs of your coming? Uh, when are you going to come back, Jesus? Jesus says that he didn't even know or, or neither did the angels in heaven know, but his father only. So there are some things that Jesus didn't know. And there are things that the angels themselves didn't know as well. Only the father knew and only the father would reveal. And so we do have to understand that there were some things that that Jesus did not know that and he had to wait until his father will let him know about his coming back uh, to judge the world. And so these angels here in Daniel chapter 12, they want to know how long will it be to all these wonders that are being spoken to Daniel, when are they going to happen? 
And then we look in verse number seven. Daniel said, and I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, time and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now, we have to understand there are two things that Jesus, he deals with in his earthly ministry. He, see, these things are going to have to be fulfilled. The, and what, what am I talking about? The things that the Romans are going to have to do to the Christians are going to have to be fulfilled before the end of the world. So this is why when you and I get to, and I want you to turn here, we'll go back to Matthew 24. Go Matthew 24. Matthew 24. I'm going to go back there. You go to Matthew 24, and we read verse number 15. Matthew 24, and I want you to go back, if you would, and let's start with verse number 15. A lot of people like John Hagee and others, these premillennialists, they take, you know, they think there's going to be a literal thousand year reign on earth that we're waiting for. It's why you get these doctrines called the rapture. We're waiting on the rapture because, because they don't understand that what Jesus is talking about is what's being revealed to Daniel about what the Roman Empire is going to do to the Christians, and, and that during the Roman Empire, the church was going to be established. Uh, Matthew 24 and verse number 15. Listen to what the Bible says here. We'll start there. When you therefore shall see, now listen to what Jesus is telling them. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, notice what he says, Flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. This is not talking about the end of the world. See, many people think this is talking about the end of the world. What good would it be if it's the end of the world with anybody going back trying to get any clothes? If the end of the world, why would anybody do that? Why would Jesus even have to bring this up? Don't run back to try to get your clothes. This is not what he's talking about. Because there's no going to get anything whenever Jesus comes back. He says, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give stuck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Now, why would Jesus be talking about the end of the world? He's not talking. He's talking about Rome coming in and destroying Jerusalem and the temple, destroying the people, persecuting the people, the Jews. He says, for then shall be great tribulation. This is what Daniel is talking about. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. He says, what the Roman, this great empire, the Roman world, world power, what they're going to do to, to Jerusalem is going to be like nothing else that has ever happened. He says, look at verse 22, Matthew 24, 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. And if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ or there, believe it not. For there shall be arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as a lightning coming out of the east and shining even under the west, so shall also, he says, the coming of the Son of Man. Go with me now if you'd be so kind. Go to, uh, matter of fact, drop down to verse number uh, 34 for me before we leave Matthew 24. He says, Wherefore, or verily, verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. I wanted to read that verse. See, because notice what Jesus is talking about. He says, the destruction of Jerusalem and the things that I've mentioned that the Roman government is going to do to you. He says, this generation is not going to pass until all these things are fulfilled. So remember the coming of the church. There are people who are going to be standing there, as Mark talked about in Mark 9, 1. 
who will see the establishment of the kingdom that Daniel prophesied about in Daniel chapter 2, that generation. Those people standing there are going to see the fulfillment of the Romans persecuting the Christians that Daniel is talking about in Daniel, that the angels are telling Daniel in Daniel 10, 11, and 12. There are people that stand in there that are going to feel that effect. But the idea what Jesus is saying is there are going to be some that won't believe. There are going to be some there who will still be hard-headed. So there's going to be a lot of Jews when the Roman comes in and they destroy Jerusalem because they didn't believe Daniel the prophet, because they don't believe Jesus. Guess what's going to happen? Many are going to lose their life. Many are going to go back. Many are not going to believe what was written in the scriptures. And because they don't believe, they're going to lose their life physically, and many are going to lose their life spiritually as well. Go with me to Luke chapter 21. Luke give this account as well. Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. Luke chapter 21. Again, if anybody have anything they want to add or ask, please just put your hand up and uh, we'll discuss it because I don't want to lose anybody. I want to make sure we understand how amazing this is that we see the fulfillment. We, we can look back and see that what the angel showed Daniel, Daniel didn't see it in his lifetime, but we see it now. It has been fulfilled. History records it exactly like God said it was going to happen. And we are now a part of that, that spiritual kingdom that Daniel saw in this vision. Brother Javier. God bless you, Brother Henry. You're on Friday tonight. Uh, okay. I just want to mention concerning that same chapter uh, in uh, Matthew 24. When you look at the, the differences and similarities concerning the coming of uh, Jesus and also the destruction of Jerusalem, when you look at uh, verse 17, it says, Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. It says, and woe unto them that are with child and to those that get stuck in those days. So it mentions here field in verse 18, where it says, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. If you go to verse number uh, 40, uh, actually 39, it says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Give me one second. Sorry, there's this dog chasing a lady. Sorry. All right. Come here. Hold on a second. I've been doing his civic duty, and uh, so appreciate that. Okay, go ahead, my brother. He's just a little puppy with the ladies running away like it's just yeah. a dog. It's a little puppy. Come here. Right. Come here. All right. He's, all right. So back to the whole thing. Is good. All right. So back to uh, verse 40. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. So in verse uh, 39 through 42 or even 38 is describing the coming of Christ but some may, some may make it a comparison because it says the word field in verse number uh, I believe 17 and 18 but that's describing when if you're in the if you're in the field don't return back to take your clothes that's concerning when the Romans come right. and when it says then when it says field in in Matthew 24 looking at verse 40 that's the description of uh, when Christ comes so there's two different Cummings, the same word field, but two different Cummings. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, make that comparison because sometimes people are just jumbling right, it all together. together. Yeah, put in the same right. pop, but those are two different time frames, even though it's using uh, the mm -hmm. word field, it's just two different acts that are about to happen. Right. Now, I want you to go to Luke chapter 21, and I just wanted to read this. Luke chapter 21, Jesus let them know that these things that Daniel saw. They're going to be fulfilled, but the people he's talking to on earth, they will even be able to know when those things were near. He said, you'll know when the end is near. Uh, Luke chapter 21 in verse number 20. Matter of fact, let's keep the setting, if you would, uh, verse number 18. Let's go there. But there shall not, Luke 21, 18. But there shall not a hair of your head perish if in your patience possess your souls. Now, let's look what he says in Luke 21, 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem.
pompous with armies, don't mouth up the Roman army, then know that the desolation thereof is not. So when you see all that, don't be running back to try to get anything. Because uh, if you do, it means you don't believe what Jesus has said. You don't believe what Daniel has wrote about. And so believe me, there were some that perhaps ran back because they did not believe. And because they looked back like, like Lot's wife did, believe me, I'm sure there are some that, that lost their life because they simply did not believe. This is why Jesus keeps stressing, don't believe them, don't believe it not. They say Christ is over here, believe it not, believe it not. How many people you know today believe these false uh, individuals that say they've calculated the day Jesus would come back and they've always been wrong? Uh, you know, you can always know when Jesus is not coming back, you know, when they say he is. You know, because no man knoweth the day or the hour uh, when he's going to come back. And so you, you, you and I have got to trust the scripture. And so Jesus says the sign of the desolation of abomination uh, that's going to take place, you will see it whenever you are surrounded by the Roman, the Roman armies. OK. And so Jesus kept warning about this because he Jesus knows that what Daniel saw must be fulfilled. OK. And so go back to Daniel. We're about to wrap this up. So go back to Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. And so now notice what he says. Now I want to read verse seven again. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand, his left hand unto heaven, he swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for time, time, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, that's the Jews, all these things shall be finished. What things? The destruction of Jerusalem. The destruction of Jerusalem. See, th this imagery we see here, brothers and, and sisters, that we see here about this angel here in Daniel chapter 12, Y'all remember when we read this? If you were part of our Revelation study, you will see this same individual, this same man clothed in linen back in Revelation. Go to Revelation 10. I will show you this. Go to Revelation 10. Go to Revelation chapter 10. Now, now notice, Daniel, in Daniel's account, it hasn't been fulfilled. Make sure you get this. It hasn't been fulfilled. But the angel, they want to know when it's going to be fulfilled. Okay? Remember that. Now, I believe if you're a student of the Bible... You know that by the time we get to the book of Revelation, what's happened? The church has already been established, right? By the time you get to Revelation. When Jesus writes to the seven church of Revelation, the church has already been established. But guess what else is going on? The Christians are being persecuted by the Roman government. This is why John is on the Isle of Patmos. This is exactly why he's excommunicated because of the persecution. Now look with me in Revelation chapter 10. I love how we can just tie scriptures together, brothers and sisters. That's why it's a blessing to be a member of the church and have the spirit of God because we can see. We can see, brothers and sisters. We got to appreciate what we can see. Revelation chapter 10. Now listen to verse 5. Revelation 10 and verse 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth. Notice what he's going to do. He lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea. We know that's Jesus and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seven angels. When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stand upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it. And eat it up, and it shall make your belly bitter, but it shall be in your mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, You must prophesy again before many people, nations, tongues, and kings. Okay? And so now, notice the imagery here in Revelation chapter 10. That same imagery is what we see here in Daniel chapter 12. And we see it in verse, uh, verse number 7 and, and, and 8 and 9. We're going to look at this in just a minute. 7, 8, and 9. 
but so remember, Daniel, it hadn't happened yet. Revelation, we see the church established. We see the Christians being persecuted. Now, before I go back to Revelation 11, go back to Daniel 12. Hey, and I heard, but I understood not, Daniel says. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. Get this, but the wise shall understand. Now, let me tell you what he's teaching here. What Daniel sees is God is going to allow the Roman Empire to persecute his people for a little while. Why? For the purpose of testing. For the purpose of trying them. For the purpose of making them white, spiritually. To clean them, to purge them. To find out who really loves God and who's really on God's side and who's not on God's side. Remember, that's the analogy. When Jesus writes to the seven churches in Asia, what does he tell those congregations? What does he tell them? To him that overcome I will give to him every one of the letters to him that overcome it. He always said to him that overcome it to him that overcome it overcoming what? Well, because the persecution has already been said it's going to happen. If you're here and you're a Christian, uh, you're going to be persecuted. The idea is, are you going to overcome? Are you going to learn from the persecution? Uh, is the persecution going to draw you closer to Christ or is it going to run you away from Christ? See, that's why in Revelation chapter 3, Revelation 3, I'll just use one. You can go on and on and on. The question is, are you, do you understand that we are overcomers if we just hang with Jesus? Revelation chapter 3, we're already on the winning side because we're in the winning kingdom. In Revelation chapter 3, in verse number 4, and verse number 5, to the church in Sardis, listen to what he says here. He tells them in Revelation 3, verse 4 and 5, you have a few names even in Sardis, get this, which have not defiled their garments. Now remember, they're being persecuted by the Romans. And they shall walk with me, Jesus says, in white. Why? For they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. You see that? And I think every one of these letters that Jesus writes to in Asia, he always uses he that overcome it. See, you've got to be able to overcome the persecutions, brothers and sisters. You got to understand that God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit allows us to go through things for the purpose of purging us. Okay? But it's only for a short while. It don't last always. And God has a purpose behind behind the persecution. But we got to get make sure we get that in our spirit. What's the purpose? To purify us. Are you going to be hated? You better believe it. Are the Romans going to hate you? When I use Romans, I'm talking about the world. Are they going to hate you? You better believe it. You know what Jesus told them back in Matthew 24? Go there with me. Matthew 24 and verse 9 about this Roman government. Notice what Jesus said here. A verse in Matthew 24 and verse number 9. In Matthew 24 and verse number 9, he said this. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. He's talking about what the Romans are going to do. They're going to deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Some of them ain't going to make it. If you read Hebrews 11, you'll see that everybody didn't receive the promise, you know, uh, down here on this earth. Everybody didn't get delivered. Uh, some did, some didn't. But Hebrews 11:38 says the ones that didn't, the world wasn't worthy, of whom the world was not worthy. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations why for my name's sake and so if you're a christian and you're in this spiritual kingdom just understand something there'll be people going to hate you why because you smell like jesus because you operate from a different kingdom and so daniel back in daniel 12 8 he wanted to know where well, when when is all these going to be revealed well and, and and this is what i want he wants to know when it's all going to be revealed daniel 12 8 and what i'm telling you is this is why we have the book of Revelation. Daniel didn't have that. You know, the book of Revelation simply means unveiled. That's why we have it. The mystery has been unveiled. It's now being revealed. What's been revealed? The church is now here, and the Christians are now being persecuted. 
And so that's what the book of Revelation is all about. And so Daniel, you know, didn't see the destruction of Jerusalem in his lifetime. He didn't see the establishment of the kingdom in his lifetime. But what we have to understand today, we look back and you can just look at secular history and know that everything Daniel saw in this vision, it came to fruition. Let me give you one more passage of scripture from Revelation and I'm done tonight. Revelation chapter 11. I want you to go over that for there because this is going to show us that we saw something and we're in something that Daniel was not in. Daniel chapter, he never saw it come to fruition in his lifetime. That's why the books was closed for him. In Revelation chapter 11 and verse number 16, let's start with 15. Revelation 11, 15. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, now get this, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. You know what that just says? Everything Daniel prophesied about to Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2. By the time we get to Revelation 11, 15, it's over. God, Jesus, has a kingdom that was not built by man's hand. It's spiritual. And it's going to reign forever and ever. They saw that. Look at verse 16. And the four and the twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are and was and are to come, because you have taken into you your great power and have reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear your name, small and great, and you should destroy them which destroy uh, the earth. Okay? Saints, this has been a powerful study. Uh, thank you all for your time. Uh, thank, if we don't get anything else out of these 12 chapters of Daniel, I hope we get that, you know, God rules. In the kingdoms of men, he knows exactly what's going on uh, today, just like he knew exactly what was going on back then. And secondly, I hope we get that God takes care of his people. We just got to continue to trust in God. There is nothing happening in, in my world, in your world, in the world, that our omniscient God is not aware of. I don't care what ruler is sitting on the throne and what land you live in, he or she is only there because the God we serve and that we know allowed them to be there. Secondly, I hope we understand this too, that we operate, brothers and sisters, if you've obeyed the gospel, we operate from a different kingdom. You have to understand that. We have angels, God's angels working with us. This is why the Bible, Daniel, kept bringing up Michael and, and he bring up Daniel because our prayers are heard by God. This is why we pray, because we know our God is real. We know our God is in control. And so we've got to stay heavenly minded, brothers and sisters, as we walk in this world. You've got to study. You've got to pray. We've got to stay focused. It's a spiritual battle, and we must every day put on the full armor of God. We work from a different kingdom, brothers and sisters. We're not in the kingdom of this world. Our kingdom, we have one king, and it's Jesus, and it's a spiritual kingdom. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Green. I appreciate the opportunity to teach this lesson. Thank you, Brother Stevenson. A great lesson. Um, I just want to remind everyone. Uh, is there anyone that has any questions or comments? Any questions or comments, whether it's concerning tonight's study or anything else you may have you would like to bring to the group at this time? Go ahead, Brother Nick. Yeah, thank you for the clarification on that because I was I was struggling with that and that makes a lot more sense and I appreciate it. I pre thank you for the lesson. Thank you, Brother Nick. God bless you, saints, all of y'all. Do we have anyone else that has any questions or comments, whether it's concerning tonight's study or anything else you may have at this time that you would like to bring to the group? Right. If not, um, a couple of things I would like to do before we sign out. 
just a reminder, uh, this Thursday, be the Lord's will, we'll be starting in the book of Hosea next. Hosea will be our next study on Mondays and Thursdays. Please don't forget, tomorrow night, 7.30 Central Standard Time, uh, Brother Stevenson will be continuing his lessons on kingdom families and kingdom marriages. That's 7.30 Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page. Also, uh, for anyone who's interested, Brother Coffee sent me some information concerning uh, the lectureship coming up next month. And um, he gave me some information concerning some hotels. Um, if anyone's interested, um, you can write this down. It says Extended Stay America Suites, Nashville Airport. And I, I don't know, what's the other one? Because uh, I can't read the other one, Brother Coffee. What's the other one? It's it's uh, Road, hold on, road, uh, Roadway Inn. Roadway Inn. R-O-D-E, um, W-A-Y. Uh-huh. Inn. Okay, I-N-N. -N. That's Roadway Inn. So you can write that information down if you choose to want to uh, check into one of those hotels. Um, that's up to you. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Because I don't want to forget anything. Um, with that being said, is there anyone that has any prayer requests that they would like to make before we close out? All right, if not, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining tonight's study. And again, don't forget, tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. 7 Central Standard Time, but the Stevenson Zoom page will be continuing on Kingdom Families and Kingdom Marriages. And also, this Thursday, the Lord's will, uh, we'll be starting in the book of Hosea, chapter 1. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to ask Brother Valir, if you don't mind, my brother, if you'll please close us out with a word of prayer. Yes. Please pray with me. Oh, Father God, holy and righteous, merciful and just, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and that precious gift that was given on Calvary's cross. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides and directs us as we journey in this dark and dying wilderness. Oh, Father God, as we have studied your infallible word out of the book of Daniel, I pray that each one of us would have gleaned just a little bit more so that we would know without a shadow of a doubt, Father, that you rule, you reign, and you allow us, dear Father, as we search the scriptures, to be able to put a little here and a little there to understand as we journey through this life that you have a perfect plan. Father, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. And I pray that we each do our part as we go about in our daily task, that our light would shine in this dark and dying wilderness, that we would be able to influence with your infallible word those who have not yet obeyed the gospel. Our light, our life, and what we do here on this side of the cross can be a positive influence for those who have not yet obeyed. And I pray, dear God, that each one of us that have learned a little bit more, that we would be diligent about staying firm, flat-footed, and faithful in the things of God. Father God, you have set your men servant aside. And Brother Green, who has allotted the time so that each one of us who would have questions or concern to be able to ask those questions make those comments so we can grow and then have your word rightly divided and our brother henry dear father i pray that you take these men as well as our sisters dear father imparting on each one the wisdom the knowledge and the understanding so that we would grow together we would love together and dear father the ultimate goal is that we would all be a part of those individuals to hear that beautiful sound of your son. Well done, good and faithful servants. So Father, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for 
everyone that participated in this Zoom class. And we're mindful, dear God, that there are those who are sick, those that are bereaved, and those that are spiritually sick, dear Father. You know each one. According to your will, we ask, dear Father, that you would touch their lives and pray that each one would understand as long as they, as well as we, keep our hand in your unchanging hand. There is nothing that we will not be able to overcome on this side of time's life. So thank you again for allowing us to gather. Thank you for the word that was rightly divided. And I pray again, dear Father, that each one of us would have gleaned, would have gleaned just a little bit more so we would understand that we serve an awesome, holy, righteous, and a merciful God. And again, Father, until we meet again, I pray that you would go with each individual to their next destination, bidding your angels to guide over them as well as their families. And we're mindful to give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 There. Uh, mm -hmm. With that being said, I just want everybody to continue to be mindful of, of our coming up appointment that we have. And again, I'm really looking forward to it. This has been some years in the making, so uh, really looking forward to, to meeting you brothers and sisters uh, face to face and being able to uh, worship with you as well as fellowship with you as well. And uh, with that being said, and, and, and closing as always, may God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. Love you all with the love of Christ. Until we meet again, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.